Hi, I'm Patu from FIFA and Gal. Last week, as the equity mutual funds bled and the market fell uh, by about 19% uh, or so, so far, debt mutual fund investors also got a shock because all debt mutual funds, uh, except for perhaps some uh, perhaps liquid funds, overnight funds and money market funds, all liquid funds, uh, all debt funds uh, fell down. And this is not because of some bond degrade or this is not because of the S-Bank uh, issue. This is because of a change, a sudden change in the bond yields. So this again is another lesson for debt mutual funds investors about a uh, 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 about a risk that exists not just in government bonds but also in corporate bonds, banking bonds, PSU bonds, whatever it is, triple A, double A, whatever the rating of the bond. So let's uh, understand this. So um, according to a report in the Economic Times, uh, because the uh, because foreign investors got scared about uh, uh, the imp uh, implications of, uh, of, of, you know, of the spread of the uh, coronavirus and what it would mean to, to their economies and uh, their own businesses and so on, they pulled out uh, money from not just equity but also from bonds. And because of that, suddenly uh, the, the demand supply, uh, there was an imbalance in the demand supply. So suddenly when they pull it out, the demand for the bonds went down and our own um, institutional investors, pension funds, insurers, etc. could not come in and uh, meet that demand quickly enough and that is the reason why uh, the bonds fell. So to understand this, we need to recognize that whenever there's just simple uh, supply demand uh, logic, when the demand goes down, the price of the bond uh, also goes down. When the price of the bond goes down, the NAV of the uh, mutual fund which holds that bond also goes down because they are market linked. And this demand and supply in the bond market is uh, measured by something called the bond yield. And uh, this is an idea which has to be understood although, although it is a little bit not, uh, not quite intuitive and easy to understand. The bond yield is defined as the interest income from the bond divided by the uh, current price, current market price of the bond. So if the current market price goes down, the bond yield will move up. And you can see this uh, if I plot. So this is the five year uh, guilt yield of uh, the, the, the government bonds yield. And the yield you can see was around 6.4% and then it's uh, dropped down. Yield going down is okay, that means price is increasing. Uh, uh, that means there is a demand. But then what happened was, uh, then suddenly around uh, the early early few, last few days, just the last three, four days, uh, the yield started moving up. When the yield started moving up, this means the price has come down. That means the demand has dropped sharply. And you can see the daily change is shown in the uh, orange line with the black dots. So when the yield started, the yield suddenly spiked up and uh, that's because of the lowering in the price. And uh, like I said, the, the foreign investors sold those bonds. The Indian investors could not come in quickly enough to uh, meet this, uh, the bonds that were available in the market unsold. So because of that, the NAV fell down. Now you may ask, this is in the five year uh, guilt yield. Similar is also seen in the 10 year. You can see that the yield is spiking up, 10 year spiking up. You may ask, so what? Those are guilt bonds. I mean, that's fine, but I'm hold, my mutual fund is hold, no, does not hold any guilt. It does not hold any sovereign debt. It only holds safe, AAA rated uh, banking bonds or PSU bonds. No, 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 that's not how it works. You see, there is, the market operates on the idea of a risk premium. So uh, the yield or the price of any other non-government bond is linked to the price of the, um, uh, to the, to the government bonds. And also these non-government bonds would also be held by uh, foreign investors, Indian investors and so on. And so whenever, so every, so uh, for longer the duration of the bond, more will be the fluctuation in the price when the demand and supply changes. So everything is linked in the market. Uh, the yield of a, um, yield changes of the government bond is linked proportionally corresponding to lead to an yield change in the AAA bond segment, AA bond segment and so on. Please recognize this has got nothing to do with credit rating changes. This has got nothing to do with defaults. This is simply supply and demand in the bond market that is causing this change in the debt mutual funds. And uh, everything is linked like I said but proportionally. So uh, the best way to understand it is to plot 
let me make this a little bit bigger so you can understand. So what I have plotted in the x-axis is the average maturity of all debt mutual funds across categories. So you can see the average maturity of a liquid fund, of an overnight fund will be extremely small, just a few days. So it will be uh, very, very close to zero here because I'm plotting it in years. This is five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years and so on. And you can see here uh, in the y-axis, I have plotted the last one week debt mutual fund return versus their average portfolio maturity. This is a weighted average. It takes into account how much AAA they will have, how much uh, gills they will have, how much, uh, uh, or I should say, uh, I should say this is a weighted uh, uh, maturity. Therefore, they will take into account how much five-year bonds they have, how much three-year bonds they have, one-year bond they have. Credit rating does not matter here. They will just take into account the maturity and they will calculate the weighted average maturity in years. And this is taken from value research. So you can see the increase in the average maturity and uh, the thumb rule is longer the, or uh, sorry, higher the average maturity, the more the fund will be sensitive to demand and supply movements in the market. And you can see that here, because you can see as you go from zero all the way to five, 10 and so on, the, uh, the, the fall in the debt fund return, uh, the fall in the NAV is uh, bigger and bigger and bigger. You can see one data point here, <laughs> uh, it's an outlier. And there's one data point here, which is an outlier. So, and you can see only a few funds here got positive return in the last uh, few days, that's in the last week. Those are typically will be overnight funds, liquid funds, money market funds, which don't uh, react too much to demand and supply in the market. Because before they even react, that bond will mature. If I hold a five-year bond or 10-year bond, there will be multiple uh, times when the demand and supply changes rapidly. There will be imbalance in the demand and supply. Therefore, the price will um, fluctuate a lot more violently for a bond that's a few years old than a bond that's just a few days or a few weeks old. And that is the big problem. And this is an everyday market risk. You are seeing it so uh, profoundly, so pronounced because of something of, uh, I mean, because of the increased fear in the market. But this happens every day. These demand and supply fluctuations, yield fluctuations happen every given day in the market. And this is something that you should understand. Of course, some hy hybrid funds holding enough debt would also have experienced such a fall in the NAV. So that is the reason why uh, the uh, NAV of the debt mutual funds fell along with the NAV of the equity mutual fund. So interesting times ahead. Let's see what the next week looks like. Bye-bye.